in today's video we're going to be looking at the near price just to see what's been going on because it had a nice run up and i mean run up from the price it was at before of course as you can see in this chart and then we'll talk a bit about the ethereum merge which has happened earlier this morning depending on your time zone it might be nighttime for you it might be early morning for you as well or maybe evening so uh, we'll talk about that as well and uh, so yeah let's kick things off so near uh, they have announced like bit country pioneer is behind near of course near is the coin in case you didn't already know uh, bit country pioneer is the metaverse platform on kusama which is the canary network of polkadot and uh, they have had a pretty good day in terms of uh, gains considering the market right considering the market has taken quite a plunge bitcoin revisiting under 20k once again uh, because it seems to be sideways for quite some time now i think it's a number of months now that we've seen bitcoin swing between 23k and 18k and then back to close to 23k even if it doesn't really touch it it gets to about 22 something and then back to 18k again but now it's just around 19.8k at the time of doing this video so uh, not too bad well still bad but not too bad considering that it could be worse it could even go to 14k as some expert traders are saying but let's talk about near so near and when the team have announced that they launched the metaverse platform and that you can stake your near over 3 million near have already been staked and remember there are 22.8 million in circulation right now so that is quite a good amount now that we have staked so maybe about 19 million in circulation left uh, but we'll have to see because uh, they are paying these bit rewards once every 23 hours more or less okay so it does take a while to get them but you do get a decent amount right again not a lot but a decent enough amount you get about 0.12 near uh, sorry 0.12 bit for each near you stake okay that's the calculation now there is a minimum amount of near that you need to stake to qualify for getting bit and i think that's 100 near okay and some people have complained about that on twitter and they've asked the team why you're not lowering the barrier why 100 and so uh, we haven't had a response from the team as to why not 100 but that that equates to about 31 dollars at the time of doing this video okay if you were to get them from the market okay so again not a very high amount it is a fair amount i should say i don't think it's a bad idea that they have a minimum amount i know that uh, with other staking platforms you do need a minimum amount to stake so why shouldn't the bit country team do the same right uh, but uh, yeah i mean looking at the price here we had three different pops as you can see we're not pulling back once again i think we're gonna have another pop maybe a fourth one uh, but uh, we'll have to see if it's gonna happen so the first pop we had here was to 36 cents then to 35 then to 37 so we put in a higher high and then we weren't able to put in another higher a high on the last 12 hour uh, candle here uh, it did go to 33.85 and so we'll have to see if on the next 12 hour candle it's going to maintain around this area or if it's going to drop below and we're going to start a pullback because of the market conditions it is a shame because this was badly timed but again the team had no way of knowing that the market would pull back but had this happened a number of days ago before the market pulled back it would have worked out nicely because we actually went from 23 cents all the way up to 37 cents so that is quite a percentage gain it's like over 45 percent gain there right so um, over 50 percent gain i should say so you know it's very very good considering the market conditions and considering the effect this had and this is of course assuming that you're fresh to this right for guys like me who have contributed to the crowd loan it's not great right we are stuck right now uh, but uh, yeah there are people that sold of course and those who did sell and bought back if they waited patiently for on this range sure they're happy and they're well rewarded now right uh, but yeah i mean i'm personally waiting for at the very least at the very least one dollar i'm not gonna touch it until it's one dollar uh, there's no point anymore i'm just holding and staking for a bit for now because the team are going to launch uh, the uh, the decks that's gonna allow us to swap between bit and near so bit is gonna have some sort of value and the fact that we have this two token model does help because it doesn't mean that we're gonna get inflation of the near coin it is gonna be capped at 100 million and like i said in a previous video i believe they're also planning to do some burning uh, when it comes to the transaction fees and so over time we should see a decrease in the total supply and it's not gonna remain 100 million and so yeah it is looking good right now but because of the market conditions i'm just not sure it can actually make it as you can see it did touch the resistance area that we had here 
around 30 cents 35 cents and so that's probably why we're not seeing more buying pressure here because of this resistance area i'm expecting the next one to be around 47 40 cents and then we have more around 50 cents because we did hold around there for about a day before the crash below 50 cents and so if there will be more buying pressure i'm expecting us to touch maybe 50 cents but i'm not expecting it to go much higher than that at least not yet right we're not seeing enough demand in the market you know buying pressure and less so on dot summer right now and so yeah uh, this is something to consider as well there's no point of being hyped up about this it is awesome don't get me wrong people are going to be building there's a lot staked but out of all those who are staked a lot of them are from the crowd loan some are from the team i don't think there were that many people buying off the market i just don't see enough hype right now there are so many cheap metaverse options that there isn't enough hype nothing that can really attract you to one specific metaverse platform and so we have to keep that in mind that there's no guarantee that there's going to be massive buys here so we just have to be realistic about it uh, next let's talk about the ethereum merge so totally switch over from the polkadot ecosystem to ethereum we need to keep an eye out on what's going on around the crypto ecosystems as a general uh, as a general thing because if you think about it right why should we rely only on one ecosystem we should always look at what's going on outside of that ecosystem right and so yeah ethereum is one which is big right everyone is talking about ethereum right now vitalik has announced that uh, they finalized the merge which has happened earlier today uh, so happy merge to all this is a big moment for the ethereum ecosystem everyone who helped make the merge happen should feel very proud today and so if you didn't already know i'm sure you already did but ethereum have merged to turn into a proof of stake consensus so they're switching from proof of work to proof of stake that means there are going to be validators that are going to be validating the blocks and they're going to be rewarded and then there are the stakers as well uh, who are getting paid from those validators uh, block rewards right so yeah uh, that's how it's going to work you're already familiar with that of course by now especially since you know for many years now since we've seen so many proof of stake consensus mechanisms and uh, so many variations of proof of stake if you think about it ethereum are just doing the basic proof of stake but there are so many variations uh, that could work out right and who knows what's going to happen but uh, we'll have to see uh, one other thing that i want to talk about here is in relation to the uh, payout right so what can you expect if you stake your ETH? you could be expecting around 5.2 percent after the merge which is not a lot right considering that other ecosystems are paying a lot more at the very least 15 percent for a decent ecosystem right so 5.2 percent is low but if you had bought ETH like for ages when it was like 100 and something bucks even 500 bucks and you're already up 3x right now uh, i mean 5.2 percent is not too bad for you right if you're holding it long term because we all know that long term ethereum will do well again we will see prices of over 5k for sure in the next bull run there will be a lot of money in the market so a lot of people talking about it promoting it and so you can expect a massive run up there in terms of price not financial advice of course but i mean holding some ETH for long term can't hurt right i mean if you're willing to hold some low cap old coin for long term why wouldn't you hold something like ETH, which has proven itself over many years right and so it's got a good track record a lot of developers and so even with the low apy it's still good if you got in early if you got in now i mean it's not too bad because over the long term we know that the price is going to go up uh, so yeah ETH uh, went up as much as three percent following the merge to 1654 bucks on average it has surged more than fivefold in 2021 outperforming bitcoin by a wide margin and in part on optimism over the merge uh, both cryptocurrencies have struggled since hitting record highs in november with ETH down more than 50 percent this year and i am curious what's going to happen in november of this year quite uh, around the end because that's when a lot of people tend to sell before the christmas holidays and so considering that the market already crashed to the ground i mean are we really going to see more selling are people going to be selling at a massive loss just for the christmas uh, presents or for the christmas holidays i don't know i don't know if it's going to repeat I mean this hasn't happened uh, in 2017 if you think about it because in 2017 in december things were going okay we actually had a massive run up until the 18th of january before the bear market kicked off and we had the first major crash uh, but uh, i mean could this be the same case now like could we see a, a market stabilize the market stabilize in november and december it is hard to know right it's too early to know uh, we're not seeing any signs of recovery either so it could be that those who wanted to sell already got out and there's nothing more to sell uh, of course there will always be some people selling but i'm talking about on a wider scale here 
So it could be that the market is going to hold. It could be that we're going to be okay uh, over the Christmas period, but we don't know for sure, right? Anything could happen. It is crypto. Could be that people just end up selling anyway. On the news, I mean, other than the Ethereum merge, we've got Angle Algorand Foundation outlining $35 million exposure to crypto lender Hodlnot. And uh, they just revealed that they've invested uh, 35 million USDC with crypto lending platform Hodlnot, which paused withdrawals. So I'm not going to read this article, but I just wanted to kind of see what's going on here in the crypto space in terms of the recent news. Of course, crypto scammers, as always, they stole 55,000 pounds from this guy's father. Uh, McCoin Banking was known to Barclays, but the bank has only offered to repay him half of what he lost. Uh, so, uh, yeah, a bad year for crypto is a really bad one for crypto miners. Uh, this is in relation to the China crackdown last year on crypto and other than that, yeah, there's not much more. Uh, let's look at uh, this article here. So this is actually funny. <laughs> as big as Bitcoin, right? If Ethereum can go from proof of work to proof of stake, why wouldn't they just say, Bitcoin, you're either going to do the same thing or we're not going to allow Bitcoin anymore, says Alex DeVries, founder of DigiEconomist. Well, this is the thing, right? If, if Bitcoin was to go to proof of stake, to some sort of voting, then think about the impact that it would have, right? I mean, how how would it impact decentralization? Because like it or not, Ethereum is no longer, and, in, and it, even, it didn't even was, right? If you think about it, it wasn't decentralized, right? Ethereum was not decentralized even before and now less with proof of, uh, with proof of stake. And so, yeah, it did well in terms of price, but I'm talking about pure decentralization here. And we have to be realistic that Bitcoin is the most decentralized. It may not be 100% decentralized either, but it's the most decentralized out there. If you think about it, thanks to proof of work and thanks to the fact that uh, there are miners all over the world maintaining the network. And yeah, sure, it may impact it in terms of not being green, uh, but I don't think there's going to be a widespread ban across the world. There will always be some countries, some places, a small island somewhere deserted where people can just stay there and mine Bitcoin and it's not going to be banned. Now, the question is, will they be able to get it off the market in order to generate some income? Yeah, that, that could turn out to be more difficult if a lot of countries decide to ban it, but there will always be some option, right? At the end of the day, OTC is another option, right? There will always be people interested to buy. So even if there would be some sort of widespread ban, then that would still not impact it, in my opinion, okay? It would impact the price, sure, but I think that Bitcoin is, is going to stay. It's going to survive, right? It's just There's no way that they can kill it off completely. And so, yeah, uh, this is just FUD here. Uh, and looking at this article here, which talks about proof of work, which talks about proof of stake, I found this part interesting. So the issue with proof of stake is that participants can increase their stake to exert more influence over the network. There are many Bitcoin wallets that hold a disproportionate amount of Bitcoin. Now, if Bitcoin were on proof of stake, it would already be a risk of man manipulation. Uh, ultimately, proof of stake represents the same limitations we see to democratic progress in nation states and companies as is. If Bitcoin were based on proof of stake, it would only perpetuate the issues it was created to solve. And so this is right here. This, this basically tells you that uh, this is the impact that it would have, right? And uh, we have to be realistic about the situation. We're not going to see Bitcoin switch to proof of stake. I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to remain proof of work. Bitcoin is the original thing, right? It's not going to change. And uh, yeah, whoever likes it, likes it, whoever doesn't, doesn't. But there will always be people that are maxis as well, who only like Bitcoin and who don't want to hear about anything else, uh, which I disagree with because there is a lot of innovation in this space, uh, proof of stake or not, centralized or not, there is innovation using blockchain technology. And I can see a potential in this. I can see a bright future in this. Uh, but just like with stocks, there will always be market cycles. And unfortunately, people are down right now and have lost a lot of money. Uh, there have been people that put in their life savings into crypto and they're down a lot and they're just waiting for a recovery and they will see that recovery if they're patient. Unfortunately, some are not patient, some think that it's going to go to zero and they'll be selling. But all you have to do is look at what happened in the last bull cycle and in the last bear cycle and that two years later, here we were, you know, we, we had the next bull. And so, of course, you can expect this to last maybe another year, maybe two, who knows? Uh, maybe it could even end in December for all we know and it could kick off then. Uh, but whenever it recovers, you can expect a lot of money to flow in. You can expect things to go well, uh, as always, with every bull run. And perhaps it could take Bitcoin to higher highs. 
and we could see even different market conditions that we have seen in the last bull but that doesn't mean we should we shouldn't take out our profits we should always try and do that when we see the price go up a lot especially right uh, so yeah just wanted to say that i uh, just wanted to cover the latest news thank you for watching as always and don't forget to hit the like if you enjoyed this video it will help support this channel and i'll see you in the next video Bye bye